Hey guys, Stanford here from Fun, and today I'm with Team 294. We're going through some of the awesome stuff they've got on this robot. A really, really cool cube intake, a tilted elevator, a manipulator. So I've got Sam, Peter, and Gavin here to walk us through all of that. So stay tuned for all that and more in an episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Get a great gift this holiday season and grab a drone at an incredible price while supplies last at corerobotics.com slash store. From beginning and educational drones to FPV and racing, you'll be sure to find a great gift. Scan the QR code and enter FUN15 at checkout for an additional 15% off these discounted prices or go to corerobotics.com slash store. All right, so Sam, go and walk us through the intake that you guys have used very effectively out on the field. Of course, thank you. So this is our robot, Puff the Magic Dragon, and it features uh, one motor intake powered by one 775 motor that runs these two sets of wheels and another 775 that is not deployable on the inside that runs these two sets of wheels in the middle. Uh, these first two are pretty squishy compliant wheels, and they have two mechanism wheels on the side that help vector the cube towards the center, and then we added higher durometer compliant wheels to the middle to help with some of the compression issues you're having, and that is also what these pool wheels on the bottom are for. They close the distance between the bottom of our robot and the top of the flex wheels to have more compression as we go for the intake to make our intake more consistent. So if we want to deploy that. Well, I'll see it go through. So this concept is pretty unique amongst robots um, for the charge up season. So was this something you guys decided very early on and developed throughout the build season? Or was it something that was kind of added on as a later addition to this robot? So originally at our first tournament in Port Wainimi, we didn't have, we had the intake on the robot, but it wasn't moving whatsoever. Uh, we actually got this intake functional the night before our second regional at Los Angeles Regional. And it's a pretty new addition, and we've been iterating it quite a lot during the off-season to get it more consistent. But originally, when we were first designing the robot, we just had the idea of a tilted elevator that grabbed from the double substation. Yeah, this, this intake has been really, really cool to see out in the field. But next up is the thing that kind of powers the whole rest of the robot. So we got the elevator, so go ahead and walk us through that. Yeah, so we have a three-stage elevator with Cascade. And it's powered by a chain for the first two stages and by one Falcon. And then we use webbing and these little 3D printed pulleys for the upper stage. The other thing that we had to work on with it was to get all the pneumatics and wiring through. We had to use this um, energy chain here that we ran everything through so it can move easily without having any problems with that. And that's also why we had to shift over our intake to the side a little bit to be able to fit that in. We also at the bottom have little magnetic limit sensors. Um, and that's how we can tell where our elevator is. And uh, do you want to go ahead and move this uh, in and out first so we can kind of see it working? All right, next thing we're going to go through the thing that was swinging up and down there. We got our manipulator, so go ahead and walk us through that. So the manipulator here, we have basically we have our rotary encoder over here that'll tell us what angle it's at even when after the robot turns off. Then you have um, small smaller compliant wheels to hold on to the game piece. The cool thing about the intake is it can take both pieces. With the pneumatics, you can basically open and close to decide whether you want cone or cube. And we can always sense kind of what piece we have in there with these photo sensors right here that'll tell us, hey, we have this piece in here right now, so we can take that. And so one thing I've been asking a lot of teams about this is how did you guys kind of arrive on this design and what was like the earlier iterations of this looking like? Um, the earlier iterations of this were more f more focused on like trying to find a way just to get the game cube sucked in. Um, like orig originally we had this sort of rotator system in the middle where we could orient the cones ideally, but uh, ultimately, we ended up going with just getting it from the double station, and the easiest way to do that was just have this so we could just keep the cone upright and suck it in that way. Okay, awesome. And can we go ahead and see this thing in action?
All right, so this has been 294. It's a really, really incredible robot. These guys have been killing it here at Beach Blitz. So thank you guys so much for allowing us to interview you, and good luck with the rest of your competition. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Get a great gift this holiday season and grab a drone at an incredible price while supplies last at corerobotics.com slash store. From beginning and educational drones to FPV and racing, you'll be sure to find a great gift. Scan the QR code and enter FUN15 at checkout for an additional 15% off these discounted prices or go to corerobotics.com slash store. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.